rebuttal one, Matt tells us the notion of power sharing is going to be seen as a failure. We say no, it's not. First of all, we say that because of America's previous, uh, previous history, the Sunnis are likely to see petition as a failure before it's even happened, because they think it's been controlled by America. Comparatively, as Richard tells you, we commonly put in Baghdad, uh, like Sunnis are being appointed to the government, and you say, oh, that only happened like two weeks ago. Yes, probably a good idea to let that work before you go in and destroy the country for the third time. Point, uh, rebuttal number two, right? Um, they tell us that the main incentive to join ISIS is the unfair redistribution uh, of resources in Iraq, right? But they, the, whilst that may be true to an extent, they will still assume this is worse under American control, right? Especially if America comes in, destroys loads of land, kills loads of civilians. That only necessarily increases that. Whilst we have co of course knowledge that of ISIS has recruitment drives at the moment, we're necessarily saying it makes it worse in the long run, right? Thirdly, we hear, uh, uh, thirdly, we hear that like the biggest problem is that the like uh, biggest. Uh, benefit, sorry, one of the biggest benefits is now, like, they see themselves as being able to control themselves, right? Like, own themselves in their three states, right? We think that if this were true, this might be a good idea, right? However, the reason it's not, not true is you don't have your own army, you're dependent on the USA for your own security. That's not any kind of self autonomy or control whatsoever. So, even that benefit doesn't exist. Finally, we hear this idea that, oh, it's okay, guys, we can, like, control the Syrian border and therefore any insurgencies aren't going to happen again, right? The the Syrian border with Iraq and the new Iraq is absolutely massive, right? It's really not very difficult for like uh, insurgents to cross the border and continue warfare in the in the long term. First point of clash: Why is this policy unnecessary, right? Opening government give us this idea that there's no other way of defeating them, but they don't actually do the comparative with the status quo situation, right? I already POI in the first speech or the second speech the idea that actually finally now that the U.S. and Western states are willing to arm uh, the arm the curbs, provide financial sources already. I ISIS is being pushed back, right? No response to that whatsoever. But what we tell you in extension is firstly, why it's necessary, no thanks mate, why it's necessarily harder to hold land than it is to take it for ISIS, right? Why is this, right? Firstly, because of the reason Marlena tells us, right? She says that actually strategists were absolutely shocked because it just happened in three months, right? Which meant it was very easy for ISIS to take over this land because there was no one there protecting any of it. They weren't expecting it whatsoever. Now, however, as Richard tells you, we know they're there, right? Which means that we finally have the insert, we finally have the ability to prepare for this, finally have the ability to deal with this, right? Richard tells you how this, like, the, like under the status quo, the Iraqi army is necessarily strengthened and local people are willing to fight, right? Because, like, again, to begin with, the reason all of this land was taken up, right, because there was no one there, average people weren't taking up arms because it was taken off guard, right? But now these people want to defend their state, right? They're like, there is no way I want ISIS to take over, behead my family, and, like, make me live under, like, absolute Sharia law, right? There's no way they want that to happen. You don't give them a chance to do this. In fact, you necessarily worsen this when you go in with this policy, right? Moreover, we tell you why it is that, like, so opening up assert to you to an extent that ISIS will collapse by itself, right? Richard gives you three reasons why this happens, right? Firstly, he talks to you about where there's no clear leader or hierarchy. This is extremely important when you want to control land for a long period of time, right? It's very easy, as like, to have a revolution and take over land because everyone gets behind you. It's like, yay, arms, killing people, taking over land, right? But when you're actually trying to control that territory, for long periods of time. Not having a hierarchy, not having a clear structure is awful, right? Because you have infighting, you have factions forming, which necessarily mean that ISIS will like, continue to attack each other, uh, attack one another and break up from within, right? Secondly, Richard tells you you have the self-interest of the individuals involved, right? Each person within ISIS is going to want like, like lots of land in the region or like this particular house, this particular mansion, right? Which means that ISIS will very much struggle to continue to stay a stable part in the long run, right? Moreover, what we tell you is that given that we are finally able to like arm them in the way that we have, right? They are suffering losses, right? Which means you already see lots of ISIS soldiers fleeing, right? Matt's only response to this is, oh, but they have a clear ideology, right? Well, when it's between having a clear ideology and like, for example, the life, like your lives and the lives of your family, even for ISIS members going away, right? You're far more likely to abandon that post and go away. Moreover, we tell you that the Kurds, uh, like, the, again, they say, oh, but the Kurds can only defend the north, right? No, that's not the case. Like, when, we, when they f help fight up, helped Iraq fight Iran, they were uh, supporting Baghdad, and we've given you reasons why it is that Baghdad will now be stronger as well, because you've got local militias and like USA going there to uh, arm those people there. So we say that necessarily ISIS will be defeated, it may not be in like six months, it may even take a couple of years, but it will occur, and it will occur in a more peaceful manner, right? But before I go on, I'll take Marlena.
Right, okay. At the point that ident identity groups have their own states with negotiated access to oil, water, and their security guaranteed, what incentive do they have to keep fighting for ISIS for these years that you are so happy to allow them out of control of the country? Okay, I will get to that, but like very briefly, like the security is not guaranteed at all. Because all you've just asserted is America will protect them. Right? <laughs> In the, like, the reason that's never going to happen is if you imagine skirmishes across the border or insurgencies, are the US Army really going to continue sending forces to Iraq again and again and again when they keep suffering losses and see this going on. There was no reason you gave us for why that would be the case. Why does this worsen life for Iraqis, right? Firstly, Richard tells you how the USA necessarily will prioritize its own soldiers' lives, which will lead to essentially like carpet bombing tactics, which lead to huge numbers of like uh, Iraqi civilians dying. Richard explains to you how that necessarily increases the chance of like them deferring to ISIS, because it's like at least ISIS are our own and aren't like killing like you know aren't killing our people necessarily in the way that like the US would be doing because it'd be um, all, uh, because it'd be on large swathes of land, right? Um, Matt tells us no, no, we have increased numbers and more experience, right? That's pretty useless compared. To a, when you want to protect the life of a US soldier far more than you want an Iraqi citizen, right? When we went, when we invaded the last time, like hundreds of thousands of Iraqis died compared to like hundreds of US soldiers, right? Secondly, what Richard tells you uh, is that ISIS will necessarily commit mass atrocities and use large numbers of human shields, right? Because they can see it as a way of scaring off the West, but also pinning it on the West, right? Every time they do that, every time like, the US try to like, uh, like are invading and trying to take over them, they are like, look, we're killing tens of thousands until you leave. Comparatively. If we allow them to break up and if we allow them to like just get defeated by the Iraqi army, that's less likely to happen. Moreover, we explain to you how it's far less likely that, like, for example, local populations will harbour um, will harbour ISIS uh, members if we allow this to happen naturally, right? Uh, in a way, there's no foreign invasion. But when there's a foreign invasion, again, you have this us versus them mentality, which is likes to occur. Like, moreover, like, thirdly, on like why this is worse in the long run, right? Richard explains to you and gets no response whatsoever, right? Firstly, it necessarily has to be a prolonged invasion because of the the fact that there's, like, they've not given us a timeline, and also because ISIS can very easily just move across the border and also just continue to like hold like small areas of territory, right? Secondly, what Richard tells you is that like. Um um, like, for example, that the reason this won't be stable is that sunny Iraq, for example, doesn't adjoin a coast. Sunny Iraq is likely to be ruled by military leaders because of that, and because of the fact there's no guarantee that any of this water and oil agreement will actually be a deal to see South Sudan, right? You don't even get the peace, even if all of the other things preceding that work. We're sorry that this is a really bad idea. We wish it was a good idea, but it's not, so it can be proud of it to a